Why People Hate to Change. Hi, I'm Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and one of the most common questions we get from managers and leaders who go through our coaching program is, my people hate to change. They have a fear of change. But think about it. Isn't that kind of backwards? How do people perform better? How do we get career goals and aspirations to be met without this thing called change? Certainly, we can use the word improvement or performance or talent development, but the fact of the matter is, when we hear the word change in the corporate world, it conjures up a negative connotation. This presentation is dedicated to giving you specific strategies to help develop change positively. Now, there's a battle that goes on. The actual change versus the internal change. Let me give you an example. We had a client years ago, and a typical example is they wanted people to cold call. And they wanted people to pick up the phone and make these really tough phone calls where there's a lot of rejection, a lot of voicemail. And what they wanted to do is coach people to change. And so we started to notice that the numbers were going up. But when you walked around the company, you could see facial expressions of discontent. We had a high turnover. By the way, our numbers were going up. Our volume of calls were going up. Our sales were going up. But as you looked at people, you could tell they had not yet committed to internally changing. Their belief system of doing these cold calls or these outbound calls was, I have to do it versus, I see the value in doing it. And that's where if we coach to change properly, we can have long-term, predictable, sustainable results. So here's a typical example when we have a sales organization. Now, we do a lot of coaching in both sales, customer service, non-sales, what have you, but they're just tangible things that we like to share. So what happens with a sales leader today? You know, we're at 83% of goal, we gotta get to 100%, and we start to tell people tactically what to do. Gotta pick up the phone, gotta get in front of more customers. Those are tactical directives. But what's the emotional commitment to doing it well? What's their emotional commitment of actually overcoming some of the challenges associated with that? Do they do it enthusiastically or do they do it begrudgingly? So change needs to be facilitated for it to be sustainable. So I'm going to give you a couple different strategies. Use observation. If somebody has to deal with, let's say, angry customers and really deal with them in a positive manner. Now, who really likes angry customers? You could literally say, I want you to observe Bob and I want you to hear Bob's tone. And let's assume that Bob is very upbeat, enthusiastic when he gets an angry customer. So when you use observation, it does a lot of the teaching and coaching for you. And the question is, what did you learn about yourself? You are committed to improving on a consistent basis. Very forward thinking. What actions do you feel you need to take to facilitate such improvement? That's a very powerful forward thing. Now, what if I brought that employee in and said, you know, you got to be enthusiastic. Are they really going to push a button and do that with conviction? Probably not. The other thing that you could do is use interviews. Use a form of what we call peer-to-peer -peer coaching. I want you to go interview this person who really gets along well with other people. So let's assume we're coaching someone to be a better teammate. I want you to go interview Joanne and I want you to find out what she does to invest in teamwork and what she has found through that process in terms of the relationships at our workplace. The question then becomes, what did the interview teach you where you feel you have an opportunity to improve and what will you specifically do with what you learned? What I'm really doing is asking questions where they're going to drive their own change. One of my favorite strategies, journal and ask yourself. So let's go back to our example of being a great teammate. The question could be, what did you learn about yourself you are committed to improving on a consistent basis? What actions do you feel you need to take to facilitate such improvement as it relates to becoming a great teammate? Every day I want you to journal one thing that you did to invest in a relationship in the workplace and what did you learn about yourself? Those are coaching strategies to facilitate change. So when we teach progress coaching, which is our training program, there are really three levels of change. And I'm going to give you a really rough analogy. Let's say 
you have uh, a son or daughter in Little League. And hopefully you don't mind my humor. But let's say your kid's in the batter's box and all of a sudden, three pitches go by and he or she strikes out. Do you really think that a kid's going to turn around when mom or dad shows their frustration or yells, swing the bat? Do you think a kid's going to really turn around and say, Mom, Dad, you'll be proud of me next time. I'm going to swing next time. You guys just relax and have a good time. No, they look mortified. See, when people change, they first have to produce effort. So let's say when the kid goes up to the batter's box the next time and they swing, that's effort. And then they swing maybe a little bit more, a little bit harder. Now maybe the progress comes in the form of pop flies, foul balls, ground outs. They still don't have a hit yet. But when we coach to effort and when we recognize and pinpoint progress, you will now have performance as it relates to results that are sustainable and predictable. So if you have someone who's cold calling in sales and they don't make the effort at all and you just mandate that they do it, they're never going to do it with conviction. This is the process that you have to go through to coach. Are they producing effort? Is there recognizable pinpointed progress? Then and only then can we have predictable, sustainable results. I hope this has met your expectations. Put a note underneath this post. Let me know if this was helpful. If you're ever interested in hearing about our training system and how we license it to companies, I'd love to chat with you. Send me an email and I hope this finds you well.